20 seconds to air. Stand by, all cameras. One and two, ready. Stand by, open your mics on the field. Standing. Ready, stand by. Slow mo. Slow mo. Ready. Three, two, one. Take tape. Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida, a special Thursday edition of ABC's NFL Football. The New England Patriots against the Miami Dolphins. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Buick and your local Buick dealers who invite you to stop in and see all the new Buicks now during their holiday get-together. And by the Miller Brewing Company, Brewers of Miller Highlight. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. There is excitement. There is electricity in the Orange Bowl tonight. The reason at the top. The two teams we'll watch tonight at 8 and 5. New England and Miami both tied at 8 and 5 records. The coaches, the players, they all feel this is it. This is the showdown because they do not feel a team with six losses in their column will make the playoffs. You can see why because of the standings in the AFC Central and the AFC West. Hello again, everyone. I'm Frank Gifford, and you can feel it here tonight because they really do believe that this is it for both New England and Miami. Two yo-yo teams. They've been up and down all season. They've been tied for the first five different times. They've had quarterback problems. And who better to explain the quarterback problems? A man who's had his own problems at quarterback. Talk about Miami, um, Donald. Um, 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 oh, it's showdown time. I'm so excited. I get it. You know what? We may have the czar of NFL coaches here tonight, Don Shula. He is the first NFL coach to win 100 games in his first decade of NFL football. And it's not by accident that he's had some help from Bob Greasy, who ranks number one among ASCII quarterbacks with 99 career victories in games that he started. Could you ask for a better one? Here the coach sends in the quarterback. Yeah, but that ain't gonna happen tonight, because you know why? He's going with his backup quarterback, Don Strop. Here's the guy who has started. This will be his 14th game that he's gonna start tonight. I don't know what's going on, but he made a child. He made a choice. Bob came in last week, won the game after Strock was knocked out against Baltimore. It's gonna be fun. I can hardly wait, Frank. What can I tell you? That really is. And not with us tonight, Howard Cosell is in Las Vegas, where tomorrow night ABC will bring three championship fights. Headline, of course, by Sugar Ray Leonard's battle for the WBC Welterweight Championship against Wilfred Benitez. He'll be reporting at halftime, and keep an eye on us, Coach. We'll try to do our very best without you. And while I mentioned the quarterback problems with Miami, well, New England has had their problems, too. Their beleaguered quarterback, Steve Grogan, calling for a backup are the fans many times over this past season. Here to delineate that story, Fran Tarkenton. Well, Steve Grogan's had problems, too, and a big problem that New England has not scored a touchdown here since 75, have not won here since 1966. That's Grogan's big problem. Back to you, Frank. As you can see, the Miami Dolphins will be kicking off. The New England Patriots receding to the right. And there is an incredible air of excitement. Uvavon Shaman will kick, and deep is Ray Claiborne. They're bringing out their guns tonight. Claiborne bobbles the ball at the 10-yard line. Now this is Alan Clark, and Alan Clark out of the 15 to the 17-yard line. New England receiving. Last night, I had a chance to talk with Don Chula. I asked him how you defense a quarterback like Steve Grogan. He'll run, he'll pass, he'll do it all. Grogan was a difference in the game up in New England early in the year. We started out, we had a halftime lead, but in the second half, Grogan took over. Uh, he ran with the football for key yardage. He threw it extremely well. He didn't have any interceptions. We got to force Grogan into making some errors. The words of Don Schuler, considered by many the master, the last word in the coaching profession. New England with the football. First and ten. Hand off. Goes to Horse Ivory, and Ivory moves out close to a first down. And let's meet this offensive unit. Grogan, you saw at quarterback, he's number 14. He does it all. He maybe tries to hold it too long, gets caught many times. The setback, number 23, Horse Ivory. Don Calhoun is in there tonight because of an injury to Sam Cunningham. Wild receiver, Harold Jackson and Stanley Morgan. They are something. There's your offensive line. It's had troubles over the air at the tackle positions. We'll talk about that. And Ivory picks up the first down on the very first play. Grogan hands off to Don Calhoun. He's piled up at the line of scrimmage, the middle of the Dolphins line. Bob Baumauer in there in the bottom, big number 73. And let's meet the 3-4 that Miami will employ on first and 10. Baumauer, the nose guard. Doug Betters and Vern Den Herter. 
There are the linebackers. When they go to a 4-3, Kim Bocamper will be the down man on the left side. He's big, he's strong. He can play both linebacker and a down lineman. And the cornerbacks, Norris Thomas and Gerald Small, they're both having terrific years. The question mark perhaps at free safety where Neil Colsey traded here from the Oakland Raiders has had his problems thus far this year. Calhoun picks up three, a second down seven. Big hole. Huge hole as All Calhoun right. exploits it out close to another first down near the 37-yard line. Don Calhoun in there tonight because the leading rusher of the New England Patriots, Sam Cunningham, was unavailable last week because of a sore ankle. He's unavailable, obviously, tonight, although he is in uniform and could be coming into the ball game. Earl Jackson goes right. The second leading receiver in the NFL with yardage per catch. Averaging over 22 yards. The leader, he's on the other side. He's Stanley Morgan of the New England Patriots. Here comes Calhoun. Right side, piled up there. Runs into a bow camper and Rusty Chambers. All right, uh, Frank, as we look here, Grogan's going to probably have to throw the ball. And the five defeats of the New England Patriots, he's only completed 38% of his passes. Of his 21 touchdown passes, he only threw five of them in those five defeats. And of his 17 interceptions, 11 of them came in those five defeats. How he plays is a very big key of how New England is going to play tonight. Now he's in a passing situation. The tight end, the great one, is number 81, Russ Francis. Lined up, top of your screen. Grogan has the time. A man is wide open. Wow. Deep downfield. He fires it as complete to Stanley Morgan. First down. Just inside the 45-yard line of Miami. Let's look at it from the end zone. Right, here we go from the end zone. Don Grogan's going back. This is a good, solid throw. I thought Stanley Morgan, once he kept, caught it, had room to, to run to the football. He caught it and then fell down. I don't know why he did that. Well, we won't worry about that. He was wide open, and he picked him up a good first down, second and long. Grogan's got him on the move. There he is. What a speed burner he is, averaging 24 yards a catch. He didn't hurt himself there. On first and 10, handoff. Horace Ivory, no, oh, he's piled up quickly. And a big man again, Kim Bocamper. He's 6'6", 245 pounds. He can play linebacker. He roams around. He can play that defensive down position when he came up three years ago. He was so eager to pop people that he made a lot of errors. He's getting over that. He is becoming, well, really an all-pro at that position. There was a loss of about a half a yard. It'll be second down and long. Good time for a blitz for Miami if they'd like to come with it. Jackson, split right. Grogan has the time. No blitz. A lot of time. This is Calhoun. Ooh. Calhoun back to the line of scrimmage. Gets a yard. Hit again by Bo Camper, who's all over the field thus far this evening. Don, it's interesting so far as I've watched the Miami secondary. The wide receivers are running pretty free on the defensive backs. The linebackers are up jamming those backs, as we saw right there on that hit. Grogan, it looks like, will have to go down the field to his wide receivers. They're the people that the hit. Kozlowski, a rookie from Colorado, comes in the secondary for Miami, number 37, as they deploy five members of that secondary, anticipating the Grogan pass on third down and eight. Ball just inside the 44-yard line. Four-man rush. Grogan sacked for the 36th time this year, all the way back to the 47-yard line. Doug Betters was in there first, and this is what Don Shula said that the Dolphins would have to do. Well, you mentioned this, Fran, earlier. Now, this is the, what, 36th sack of the year. Grogan, known as a running quarterback, calling his own plays this year. has not run that much, but the sacks have really gone up a great deal. And that time he had no chance. Bo Camper really is the guy that forced him there. Too many people in there for him to run around. Bo Camper coming from the down lineman position. Tony Nathan is deep, leading the NFL in punt returns. Eddie Hare, the rookie from Tulsa, having a tough time thus far this year, but he aims it high. Nathan. Good break right there. And Nathan taking the chance, taking the risk. And it pays off as he moves out to the 33-yard line, hit there by Steve King. Explosive action here in the first few minutes. We'll be back in a moment. Sensational Sugar Ray Leonard, Olympic champ, undefeated as a pro, now goes for the title against undefeated Wilfred Benitez. Tomorrow night on ABC. Miami with their first possession of the night. The quarterback is Don Strzok. He became the starter a week ago when head coach Don Shula and Bob Greasy agreed he was not moving the offense. But he had to go out in the second quarter. Greasy came in and won it over Baltimore. But this is Don Strzok, 6'5", a 220-pounder. Setbacks, the big man, number 39, Larry Zonka. And Dell Williams, still nursing sore wins, number 24. He gets the initial call 
and moves out over the 35 to the 37. And offensively, you saw the setbacks of Zonka and Williams, the quarterback Don Strzok. Let's take a look at the wide receivers. They're a super pair, as are the New England Patriots. Matt Moore, he can go deep, he can work well underneath. Duriel Harris is there, and the tight end is Bruce Hardy, a three-year man out of Arizona State. There's the offensive line. Bob Kuchenberg grabs the best over the left side of left tackle. Mark Dennard at center, replacing Jim Langer, who went on the injured reserve just yesterday. Jim Langer, the all-pro center, perhaps had played his final game for Miami. Second down and six. The ball at the 38-yard line. Handoff, Dale Williams. Slips, tries to hustle. And we had an opportunity to talk to Don Strock last night, and we discussed with him what he felt he could do to exploit this number one defense in the NFL, New England. I don't, uh, I don't know if they have any definite weaknesses, but I, but uh, they're so strong in, in the front line and their rush that they make you hurry throwing your your passes a lot, and uh, we may uh, have to start with our short passing game to bring the linebackers up and then try to get the deeper ball in. Third down, call it five. Out comes Zonka, in comes Tony Nathan, the rookie from Alabama. He wears 22. Fairly good receiver, Gary Davis, a good receiver, 27's in there. Got a little movement. Movement, you saw the flag, whistles blow, play blown dead. Here's our call. Our referee starts, tonight. number 71, offense. Our referee tonight is Dick Jorgensen. He'll be bringing you the call. My current false start, as you heard, the discussion now on the field and will be marched off bringing up third down we'll call it 10 and let's meet the defense three man down for new england ray hamilton the nose guard mel lunchford at one side but he'll be relieved by tony mcgee perhaps the best sacker of the new england defense those are your linebackers and believe me they are really something else particularly that steve nelson we'll talk about him the cornerbacks i think as good a pair of cornerbacks as there is in the entire nfl as i said New England, the number one team in the league defensively. Gary Davis and Nat Moore. The two principal receivers and Strzok goes for Moore. Should have had it. It would have been a first down close to midfield. That brings up fourth down. Put a little pressure on him there. The ball was catchable, but he had some New England guys right there around him. Frank, I think it's kind of interesting and Fran to look at that defensive secondary of the Patriots. It's the first time that all starters back there. Claybert Hayes well, uh, well, actually, we got Sanford and Tim Fox. They're all uh, number one draft choices. And you get that kind of draft back there, those guys start playing together, they're going to do some good ball. On the fourth down, out comes George Roberts, averaging a little over 39 yards per punt. He's been blocked one time at 58 attempts. And this man, Stanley Morgan, can really motor. He hasn't been able to break one off recently, but he has in the past. He has great speed. He's positioned at about the 23-yard line for New England. Roberts with a long count. Has to hurry. Their catch called for, and the rush was on to block the punt. Morgan calls for the fair catch, has the ball at the 28-yard line, and we'll be back in the Orange Bowl in just a moment. Buick. Saturday, Eastern Powers collide as highly ranked Pittsburgh tackles Penn State. Then the Army-Navy game, a classic clash on ABC. 26 remaining in the first quarter. Miami and New England, all the players feel this is it. They do not feel that if they lose tonight, that they will be able to get into the playoffs. The reason, quite simply, because the AFC is crowded with teams who will probably not have six losses. So the heat and the competition tonight. On first and 10, Horace Ivory gets the call out over the 30-yard line. A gain of a couple, it'll be second down and eight. On second and eight, Grogan, who calls his own plays. Puts Harold Jackson to the right, Stanley Morgan to the left. Play action. Looking for the big man, Russ Francis, who catches the ball short of the first down, out close to the 37. He had to get just beyond the 38. Rusty Chambers all over Mr. Russ Francis, who... Absolutely right. It was a good reaction by Grogan. They got the big boys in for the third down plunge. About a yard and a half. Calhoun gets the call. Oh, no. Calhoun is met by Bo Kemper. It'll be progress. I think he's short. Baumauer was in on the stop. And we got a New England Patriot down on the field, Frank. Oh, Baumauer, the old, old boy from Alabama. I'll tell you, that's an offensive lineman, and New England really cannot afford to lose an offensive lineman. They are hurting at both tackles. They brought in Gary Pitts, 
two weeks ago. Thursday, he had to start. He had been out of football for several weeks. They have Shelby Jordan injured at one tackle. They have Dwight Wheeler. He's also injured. Frank, do you think they're second-guessing themselves now on trading Leon Gray, the perennial all-pro, away to the Houston Oilers? All right, that's fourth down. Eddie Hare will do the punting for New England. Tony Nathan is back at the 25-yard line of Miami, and he's a threat. High snap. Oh, yeah. Got Hare a flag. Off, and a flag is down as Hare is also down. It's rough in the kicker. No Norris Thomas was in there on Hare. He must have thought he could get it. Let's take a look. Well, here's classic, Don. He didn't go after the in front of the foot. He went right at the man. Well, you know, he, he really thought I think he was going to block that. But it was a high snap, and he saw Hare take an extra long step. But he just, as a matter of judgment, he didn't get it. A big first down. Hare, coming into this game, had the lowest. He was ranked 28 in his net yardage punting. That was 30 yards. So that's been an area in New England's attack. We'll get the call here in a minute. Tell us what we already know. Running into the kicker, number 41, defense. All right. First down. 6.43, remaining in the first quarter. Inside handoff, Horace Ivory. And Ivory squirts out over the 45 for a gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. The three-year man from Oklahoma who had over 400 yards coming into tonight's game. That is some story. They have not won here either, as Fran mentioned earlier, since 1966. This is Horace Ivory. Turns the corner. No place to go. Doug Betters and Bob Baumauer. Betters 75, Baumauer 73. And Betters has played superb football for Miami. As we look at Sam Adams, he, well, just about all of these offensive linemen for New England have been playing hurt. Quite frankly, that's pretty much the story around the entire NFL when you get into the 14th week of the season. Third, third and six. Don, the key here, watch the two offensive tackles of the Patriots. See if they're able to block the Ben Herter and Betters. That's Pets on the right side, 77. Pete Brock on the left side, 58. Grogan fires for Russ Francis, a spectacular catch inside the 40, first down New England, and this man continues to amaze even those of us who have watched this game for so All many right. years. Watch Grogan here. He does an excellent job here. You'll watch Den Herter coming in your picture. He's going to really level him. Grogan makes a great throw. Francis makes a great catch. Grogan's off to a good start tonight. I'm going to call that catch maybe even better than that throw because if you'll notice, that old boy stretches out. Didn't you like to have your big old tight ends do that? Helps that percentage. It's kind of a key, too, for, uh, I think, because we are working on it. As uh, Rick Sanford is not used to that strong safety position, he's going to be... Actually, I got that mixed up. This is Don Calhoun, and he bobbles the football. Miami has it. Miami comes up with the football. Don Calhoun with the ball care. And Miami gets the first turnover of the night, and this game could be predicated on that. It was Tim Foley. Frank Gifford along with Don Meredith, Fran Tarkenton, Howard Cassell in Las Vegas for a triple-headed championship fight card coming your way on ABC tomorrow night. First and ten, the Miami Dolphins. Tim Foley coming up with the fumble by Calhoun. Daryl Harris, foot to the left. Ball at the 36-yard line. Play action by Strzok. Has a lot of time. And the man he checked off to was Nat Moore, short, incomplete. He, he did everything right there. He got a good play pass action. We look at Rush Francis. He looked left. He looked the defense off. And then he threw the ball in the dirt. Short arm sacks. He moves around. Now he moves over to the right side. They try to get him free, get him the best position. But on second and ten, Bill Williams gets the running play call, stacked up at the line of scrimmage, and it was Ray Hamilton sliding over from his middle position to make the stop. Again, that would be Prentice McRae. Third and ten. That more in motion. Strzok has the time. Under throws. Ah, you might have hit it, Francis. Incomplete. That will bring up fourth down. Morgan, the speedster at the 22-yard line of New England. No score. 3.45 remaining in the first quarter. Showdown between New England and Miami. Both teams in the playoff last year. Both teams knocked off by Houston. Roberts hangs it high. A beautiful putt 
Morgan lets it bounce, and it takes a New England bounce into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. Good little, little job of theatrics there. A very chancy move by Stanley Morgan. 63-yard punt, George Roberts will be back in this electrified Orange Bowl in a moment. If you get the feeling this game is being played a little close to the vest, that's the feeling that I have. Don Meredith has, Fran Tarkenton has, so much on the line. Frank, uh, it's interesting to note that Grogan is starting off 4 for 4. Strzok started off 0 for 3. Grogan's got some rhythm going. Strzok got it done. I think, uh, I think Don Strzok has been a little bit hesitant. Well, that might be the cause of it. Let's see what Grogan can do. Hand off. On first and 10, Calhoun right side. And Calhoun out to the 24-yard line. Pick up the 4. It'll be second down and 6. Second down, 6. Play action. Grogan. Look out. Tries to run and piled up. Steve Toll was there. Baumauer was there. And burned in Herter. And this is what Miami has been being hurt with over the past two years. Brian Sykes at Cleveland hurt them. They were hurt in Baltimore with the quarterback. Captain with only four guys rushing. That's pretty good. Grogan now has been sacked twice. They've been sacked 35 times coming into tonight. Strong arms and it's yeah. out to Stanley Morgan. And Morgan, who you really have to respect because of his blazing speed, gets the first down. Here it is from the end zone, and he's really throwing strikes. He's holding the ball a little longer than, than he did. He needs to be holding it, but when he throws it, he is throwing a strike. He's got a lot of people around that ball. He threw it over the linebacker. Perfect throw. Good catch by Morgan. The ball at the 37-yard line. We're inside two minutes of the first quarter. Picked off. Oh, for Stanley Morgan, Gerald Small comes up with it. And Gerald Small, who was explosive a year ago in December, comes up with another Miami turnover. They'll have a first and 10 at the 17-yard line. Grogan tried to read the blitz, hit Stanley Morgan, threw it behind him. Small made a spectacular catch. I didn't mean for him to hit uh, Gerald Small. You are right there. He's a little too cute. You see, that was a little quick, fake turnaround. But he has the man wide open. Yeah, they've been trying to work on this thing, I'm sure, all week in practice to take advantage of this, and he just missed his receiver. Hit Small right between the four and the eight. Well, there really wasn't Ripped much patience. 51, the linebacker, Rusty Chambers. Got a finger on it. That was enough. Small gets the turnover. Inside the 17-yard line, right at the 16, they mark it. Larry's off that single setback. Two tight ends. Ronnie Lee, the rookie from Baylor, is in there. With Bruce Hardy, Zonka gets the call. Gets inside the 15 to the 13 for a gain of three. It'll be second down, seven. It's not going to be easy for the Dolphins to get in here as we see the first quarter ticking down almost to the minute mark. Considerable breeze here tonight. Hard to determine which team it will affect the swirls here in the Orange Bowl. Second and seven. Donker remains. The single setback. Two tight end offense. Strzok back. It's a block from Zonka and in out of the hands of Bruce Hardy. Bruce Hardy, who can catch the football. Andre Tillman, of course, broke his leg in training camp. Bruce Hardy took over the job at the tight end while he is a pretty good receiver, perhaps better than Tillman. He's third and seven. New England leads the entire NFL in quarterback sacks with 52. Strzok knows that. Tony Nathan, 22, Gary Davis, those are the setbacks. Stock has to hurry, fires in the end zone, incomplete. Intended for one or the other, either Nat Moore or Duriel Harris. They were both in the area. Stock is 0 for 5. Fourth down, we'll see Uba Von Schaman. But they didn't. Uba Von Schaman, 31-yard attempt. Von Schaman, of course, the man who replaced Garo Yepremian. Man holds an NCAA record for consecutive points after a touchdown with 125, and he just hooked one through right there for three. Smooth as glass for Uber Von Schaumann. And the 41 seconds remaining in the first quarter, Miami has the lead, three to nothing. Sweden's Ingmar Stenmark, the master of the slalom, favored to win the gold in Lake Placid in the 1980 Winter Olympics, exclusively on ABC. This game being televised in the Miami area, compliments, quite frankly, of our affiliate here, Channel 10. They bought up the remaining 128 tickets as we look at Alan Clark, deep for New England. Uwe von Schaumann, who hit from 31 yards out to put Miami on top, hits the ball. It'll be taken short, but it will be taken by Clark at the 15. Uh, oh, boy. And the 
rookie from Northern Arizona moves out over the 30-yard line, close to the 32, where New England, who has turned the ball over twice, and as we were talking while we were away, Don and Fran and I, it perhaps is a little bit of a, a moral victory for them, and they only gave up three points with a fumble and an interception. Don Grogan, who made his 62nd consecutive start. That's tops for any quarterback in the NFL. He's tough, big, raw bone. Perhaps maybe likes to hold a little longer than he should because he has so much confidence that he can run if he has to. Hands off to Horace Ivory, right side, piled up, 83. Burned in, heard it there first, right at the line of scrimmage, and they may, may lose a half a yard. As long as there's a number one in scoring over the tie there as we end the first quarter. And I guess, Miami, once again, they've only allowed three touchdowns in the first quarter all year, and so they can keep that string going. Much is on the line here in the Orange Bowl tonight. We'll be returning in just a moment. They're looking to be number one, and it could emerge from this game tonight. They both have eight and five records, the Dolphins and the New England Patriots. They both have two games remaining after this Thursday night contest. Next week, New England will play the Jets in New York, and they close at home against Minnesota as we look at the first quarter stats. For the Miami Dolphins, well, they have two remaining. They travel to Detroit a week from Sunday, and then they play their final game here in the Orange Bowl, and they play it against, yes, the Jets. Second and 11. Rogan puts everyone in the pattern. There's a man open deep, and it's Stanley Morgan. He fumbled. He the ball. ball. That is amazing. Three turnovers in Tim a row. Tim Foley gets his second fumble of the night. That is discouraging for poor old Rogan. Let's give him credit. He has been criticized that he couldn't throw the ball up over linebackers. He goes back, watching feather this ball in there, right down the middle. This is a pass. This is not a thrown ball. This is a well-passed ball. Over linebackers in front of defensive backs. But the result, a fumble by Morgan. Three turnovers. And the Dolphins are still looking for their first first down of the night. <laughs> that is Colsey applied the hit. Foley was there. He gets his second fumble of the night. He's playing just absolutely superb football for Miami. He has for the past couple of seasons since he moved over the strong safety from the cornerback. The ball is at the 46-yard line of Miami. Strop on first down. Going to the bomb. That Moore is back there dueling with Whoa. Ray Claiborne. Yeah. And the flag goes yeah. down. Yes, yeah. Ray Claiborne oh. and now more. That got to be an offensive interference on that one, I would say. I don't see how it could be defense. I, I'm interested to see this call. Offensive interference, you'll see it as Nat Moore runs right up Claiborne. Claiborne was looking for the ball. That's the key to it. Very he good playing position. the ball. You know, Frankie also, Claiborne never, he really had good position on him all the time. There was no way Nat Moore was going to beat him. He was in that backpedal position as a cornerback. Sometimes has difficulty learning. He seemed, Claiborne seems to be born with that particular talent. But he had him in good position that time. He also has great speed, so Nat Moore didn't get close to getting behind him. Are you ready, Dan? Let's... All right, here's the official's call. We're talking about Interference, Nat Moore. Interference, number 89, offense, still first down. Dick Jarkison tells us what you just saw. Don Shulis uh, saying I, he doesn't like it. I really thought it was a good play by Nat Moore, though. He tried to prevent the interception, maybe get a interference call. You want your receiver to fight for the ball like that, and he did, but he got caught. The ball now back at the 36-yard line is first down and 20. New England. They like to blitz. They drop back. Come with their three down men. And it's Adele Williams. It was kind of a shaky oh, yeah. screen, but it was good for nine yards. And big number 78, Tony McGee, was right in the face of Don Strzok, but he got it off. I'll tell you, Sugar Bear, Sugar Bear Hamilton was out there, too, and he played it pretty well. It's one of those things close, but no uh, blue chips. For one. That's not Second it. down and 11, Steve Howell, a rookie from Baylor, comes in replacing Larry Zonka. He's in there with Dell Williams. Howell is number 36. The ball at the 45-yard line. Off. Dell Williams tries to shoot to the outside and has a little success. Missed there by Rick Sanford, but taken by Steve Nelson. And he gets about three yards. It'll be third down and nine. All right, here's Steve Nelson, by far their leading tackler out of Anoka, Minnesota. This man can play football. He plays the run as good as any linebacker in football, as you see right here. Rick Sanford missed the, the tackle, but then he got it. We got a penalty here. There's Frank. a late flag, and it's going to be marked off against New England. I believe it's going to be. A roughing call.
Steve Nelson says, tell me about it. And this will be Dick Jorgensen, our referee. Personal foul, pushing the back after the whistle blow. Number 71, defense, first off. Ray Hamilton, the veteran from Oklahoma. Oh, boy. And New England is making a lot of mistakes in the part of this game. Digging themselves a big hole. But they are down by only three. Three to nothing. Quick toss, Sanka. Tries to use his 237 pounds. A flag is down, as you saw, Zonka gets to the 35-yard line. Has to be a holding or a clipping out there on the tight end of the flanker back off that corner or something like that. Holding is going to go against Miami. Can't seem to get on track. We're going to have interference. <laughs> Roughing them or holding. They're just sputtering around back and forth. Can you imagine what it'd be like? Now, Zonka had a pretty good head of steam that time. Holding number 24, offense, still first down. We have 13, 34 remaining in the first half. Gary Davis is in, 27, with Steve Howell, 36. Struck with a lot of time. Hangs it. Oh, boy. Oh, I intended for Bruce Hardy, and Bruce Hardy was pounded there. He knew he would be. It was Tim Fox. And Mike Kane, both of them back there defending. He was dismissed from that game, out of the spot, the final game of the season. Second down, 20. Gary Davis turns a corner and collides there with the New England defender, Rod Schoke, the right linebacker, but not until he had picked up about five yards. It'll be third down and 14. The ball inside the 42-yard line, third down, 14. Strzok hangs it up deep into a crowd. Oh, Jimmy Cephalo. Jimmy Cephalo went up with number 34, Prentice McCray. Jimmy Cephalo out of Penn State, Frank. The first catch he has had in nine ball games. He was the MVP of the Cotton Bowl as a freshman at Penn State when they beat Baylor. And he's the kind of guy that they, a lot of times the pros say, hey, we can't, this guy won't make it. He's too slow, not, he's not big enough. And he has not had a good year as far as receiving, but what's the footwork this time? Pretty well covered, wouldn't you say, Francis? He was, and watch Prentice McCray. Prentice McCray really went up as you see his feet come down inside. Look at Cephalo's right foot. Oh Move it goodness. back across that and say, play. that's walking right, the old line. Playing. That is beautiful. But Prentice McCray really had a play on the ball, and he mistimed his jump. Result, Miami's got the ball on the 10-yard, 11-yard line. And a first down. They lead three to nothing. Zonka comes back in. He usually gets the heavy work down here. He gets it off the left side. There he goes, there he goes. Zonka, oh. he'll have a first down. And he will be inside the one-yard line. And Zaka, who just went over 700 yards in rushing for the year, has had a spectacular comeback. How would you like to be a little defensive back, 190 pounds like Rick Sanford here? And Haynes, 25 and 40. Here comes Zaka. Nobody's taking him on nose to nose. They're trying to take him on the side. <laughs> Not much way to get that big man down when he rambles in. They're ready to go in and get this game up to 10 to nothing. Oh, they're moving right along. Harry Zonka came into tonight's game. He only needed 61 yards to become the sixth player in the history of this game to gain 8,000 in his career. How about Zonka off the left? Suits me. I'll buy that. And oh, so easy. Bouncing off Rick Sanford, but not until he was in the end zone. And Miami has extended their lead over the Patriots. Nine to nothing. And let's look again. He's good, tough down here. Good charge by the offensive line. Kuchenberg, Newman, Dennard. Good block by number 24, Dell Williams. Buried the cornerback, Zonka, easily into the end zone. That's his eighth touchdown this year, and the Miami defense has only given up seven touchdowns, so they'll swap Zonka against the whole group. Von Schaumann for the conversion. I don't have to tell you where this game is being played. The crowd waving their handkerchiefs. All right, let's watch one more time. The blocking on the left side of the line of the Miami Dolphins. There's 84, Bruce Hardy. There's Kuchenberg. There's 86, Ronnie Lee. They're all getting a surge. Oh, 
all Saka had to do was just zip on into the end zone. The Dolphins have a 10 to nothing lead, and the Patriots better get their act together if they want to get back into this game. We'll be back in just a minute. Saturday, Eastern Powers collide as highly ranked Pittsburgh tackles Penn State. Then the Army-Navy game, a classic clash on ABC. The Orange Bowl in Miami. A happy Orange Bowl at the moment with 11.39 remaining in the half. The Dolphins out in front, 10 to nothing. Von Schaumann kicks deep is Don Westbrook. Another New England speedster. He takes it at the 11-yard line. as he gets out to the 23-yard line where New England will take possession. And what is old Groden going to do now? He's going to hand off to Calhoun. And Calhoun over the 25 for a game of about three. It'll be second down and seven. To his man, Bob Greasy, that's carried him for so many years. On second and seven. Calhoun does not hold on. Incomplete. I think it's the quality of the man. He does not want to cause any problems. He's very close to Don Shula. They had many discussions before it took place. Grogan, third down, seven. Grogan, Morgan is open. Incomplete. Defensive play there by the rookie from Colorado. What a surprisingly welcome rookie this young man has been, Kozlowski. He was there. It made Grogan throw the ball ahead of Morgan. Now here's Stanley Morgan running the Z out pattern. You'll see Kozlowski come into the play and thought it was interference, but as I saw the replay, it wasn't. Good that the official didn't uh, throw a flag there. Good defensive play. Pretty good throw, though. Eddie Hare will punt as New England is having a difficult time getting on track. They've turned the football over. They're down 10 to nothing, and they're kicking to a dangerous man. A rookie from Alabama, Tony Nathan, averaging over 12 yards per return, leading the NFL. Hare again has to hurry, and Nathan has to go for the fair catch, bobbles it, and covers it at the 38-yard line. But once again, Miami will have good field position. They'll have their first and 10 at their own 38, and we'll be back in just a moment. We're not just a couple of animals who can only play football. We can be civilized, too. Tennis is sophisticated, but you still got to be fast on your feet. So we still drink light beer from Miller. It's got a third less calories than the regular beer, and it's less filling. And it really tastes great. Now that we've played singles, we're looking for a nice, friendly game of doubles. Tennis, anyone? Mm -hmm. Like beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. The import of this game. Tonight's loser will have six games in the loss column. The import, well, one of these teams will go on to win the division, and it, in all probability, is going to be the winner of tonight's game. The AFC will come from somewhere in the central, or whether the wild cards will probably come from somewhere in the central. And the Western Division of the AFC will give you those standings a little later. On first and ten, Miami with the ball at the 38-yard line. Hand off, Dell Williams, right side, piled up the line of scrimmage, breaks out to the outside, gets a couple to the 40. It'll be second and eight. I would say that there's a lot of football coaches around going to agree with the general. That that's probably a pretty good way to play. <laughs> he has spread that word. Second and eight. Keep in mind, though, these pats are explosive. Twice this year, they've gone over 50 points. They can hit from anywhere out with those wide receivers. Great speed on the outside. Strzok hands off to Zonk. And uh, Zonk uh, pounds his way close to a first down. Just ran right over Mike Haynes, who is one of the better cornerbacks in football. What a story number 39 is. As you watch Zonk get the handoff from Strzok. We haven't heard of him for three or four years. Watch him just run over as Haynes tried to give him a shoulder block. That'll never get that man down. And he keeps on piling on. He is playing as good this year, Don, as I've seen him play ever. He really has had a good year, man. Released, of course, by the Giants last year. And last night, when talking to Zonk, he said, I just would like to say something. I got the nicest letter ever written to me by Wellington Merrill, president of the Giants. And a couple days later, I received a similar letter from Andy Robustelli, the man who signed him at the Giants. So they're saying, come back home? On first and ten. He got Take it to the line, and this is Matt Moore on the lateral. And Miami pulling the stops out as Matt Moore gets a first down. He's inside the 35, close to the 33. Sam Hunt finally took him out of bounds. I tell you, if Sam Hunt wasn't there, there's no telling what this guy can do because really an explosive runner and had some guys out there in front of him. You can see him again. Haynes goes down, and that's Hunt, number 50, who came back from his linebacker position. It seems that Haynes got a little hurt on that last play and is down on the sideline. Matt Moore. 
And he is so effective when he gets the football in his hands, whether he is running on reverses or on passes. That Moore gets the first down on a pickup of 18. Sensational Sugar Ray Leonard, Olympic champ, undefeated as a pro, now goes for the title against undefeated Wilfred Benitez. Tomorrow night on ABC. There's Mike Keynes. He appears to be okay. Jogged off the field. He's taken a couple of vicious shots. He got one a moment ago from Zonka here against Nat Moore. And that That's big run ball. and a lateral. He goes down. And I think he just collects big number 50, Sam Hunt. He fell right on him. Sam Hunt is on the program at 250. He could be closer to 265. He's a huge man. They call him the big backer. For sure, he's a load to fall on him. The first down is inside the 39-yard line. Miami moving. They lead 10 to nothing. 9.36 remaining in the first half. The two tight ends are in. Struck. Play action fake. Going for Daryl Harris. Picked off. Prentiss McRae, who came in there in relief of Mike Haynes. And New England gets their first turnover of the night. And a very timely one indeed. Had Miami put up any more points on the board, this one could have been sayonara. And here's Daryl Harris coming around the post from left to right. In a minute, you'll see Prentiss McRae just sitting in the middle. As you saw the cornerback letting go in the middle. He's got to have help from McRae. He had help from McRae. Obviously, Schrock didn't see him. Interception. And New England needed that than the Rouge. Yep, they did because Miami really not playing that well. Could have put this thing not out of reach, but it could sure put it in jeopardy uh, based on turnovers that New England has committed so far. The penalties, fumbles, interceptions. Steve Grogan. A new lease on life. Given to him by Curtis McCray in the defensive end of New England. Ball at their 28-yard line. On first down, Grogan will go to the air. Dumps it out to Ivory. And Ivory with a nifty little scamper moves for about six yards out to the 34. It'll be second and four, taken there by Larry Gordon, the outstanding linebacker for the Dolphins. Station. Second and four, Calhoun gets the call over the left side. Flag is down, and Calhoun is down at the line of scrimmage. Pile up there, Rusty Chambers and Gerald Small defensively for Miami, but a flag is down. Uh, obviously, Francis came back to Huddle and said, give the ball to Calhoun. <laughs> Calhoun said he didn't want the ball. <laughs> These two teams with a lot of mutual respect. Great respect for Miami in the Orange Bowl, where New England is not once in 66. It's going to be a holding call. It's going to work against New England. We saw Steve Toll telling us all about it. New England is not playing like a seasoned veteran team. Uh, they're, they're very inconsistent, as they have been all year. And another penalty hurts them as we listen to the call. Holding number 58. Offense, still second down. Keith Rock over the left side. You talked about the Reds beating Baltimore. Last week, they lost an overtime to Buffalo. And this is Horace Ivory getting back to the original line of scrimmage, close to it. It'll be third down and 11. Taken by Doug Betters and Bob Baumauer. <laughs> back to a pass situation. He's really got to get 10 yards. He's got to go to either outside receiver or the big tight end, Francis. Morgan to the left, Harold Jackson to the right. Got wide open is Jackson. He's out. He's out. They're oh, marking it as good. Oh, that's Carl Jackson against Norris Thomas. He must have come down with his foot inbound because two officials were right I, on top of it. I would like to see this. He really beat his man easily over there, Harold Jackson did. The ball's out. Boy, he's going to beat by a mile. Let's watch it. This Harold Jackson. What a player he is. You know. Oh, that's pretty. That is really pretty. He's seen that twice oh, tonight. That is fantastic. He's a he's a top receiver in terms of reception with 484. I guess that was his 485th among active players in the NFL today. Excuse me. There goes Calhoun. Calhoun out of the 45 gets four out to the 47 yard line. Second down and six. Second and six. Horse Ivory. Look out. AJ Dewey runs him down from behind. There'll be a loss of a yard. It'll be third and call it seven. Dewey ran him down, but the guy that really did turn in was old Tim Foley, number 25, came up from his safety. Oh, okay. Third and seven. Look out. He Throw it up. Hangs it up on the blitz for Jackson. He caught it. And he takes it away from Norris Thomas at the 20-yard line. 
And Brogan just hung it up. He read the blitz. They were all coming. They had a safety blitz on with Foley. Oh, he really did. He also yeah. had Rush Brandon. This is a pretty good throw. Whenever you got a, your offensive man one-on-one -on -one with a defensive man, Thomas is back to him. Jackson makes a good old veteran move, comes inside, makes the catch. Big play. Brogan's playing pretty good. Here goes Jackson again. You see him isolated man on man. You blitz, that's all you've got left. Everybody wants to criticize the cornerbacks that can't cover man for man. I haven't seen one that could yet. And we've seen it week after week when the quarterback beats the defense. When they blitz, they've got to cover one on one. And that time Jackson was successful. On first and 10 of the 20, Horace Ivory left side. And he finds a little opening, moves down to close to the 16 yard line. Gain of four. It'll be second and six. And Ron Earhart likes it. Second down, six. Jackson to motion. Rogan, he'll have Morgan, and in the end zone is Jackson. He had Morgan open, he had Jackson open, and he was perfect to Jackson. New England has scored their touchdown that they have been missing for the last three years. Now that was a good throw, Frank. Uh, Fran, he just a little play action pass. You see Francis clearing that a little bit. Again, I'd call that a good pass and not a good throw. It's just right there where you got to have it. I'll tell you, folks, Brogan's playing good. And really, the thing to turn this thing around, Miami was going in for a 17-0 lead. Strzok's interception looms very big right now. And that's no Humpty Dumpty that Harold Jackson put the move on. That's Lawrence Thomas. He's a good man for man defender. He was beaten on the blitz a few moments ago to set up that 20-yard touchdown pass. And Jackson just breezed by him. To put New England on the scoreboard, John Smith on for the conversion. Brogan holds. And New England has drawn within three with 5-14 remaining in the first half. Put the, put the coffee on, Mama. We got, a, we got a game here tonight. Interesting to note, Frank. Brogan is 10 of 13, one touchdown, 156 yards as we're midway, a little past midway of the second quarter. Not a bad night so far. Smith, Townsend, Tony Nathan. That is three-yard line for Miami. It's a fine football player, this rookie from Alabama, Tony Nathan. He gets out to the 27-yard line. Oh, Harold Jackson. You know, he played to Philadelphia, Los Angeles, and here in New England. He's, I think tonight is his 155th. Hi, Mom, Dad, Lego Harold. 155th of 56 consecutive games. So, you now he's a good player. He's durable. Maybe one follows the other. That's caught his 487th career pass. He actually played at L.A. twice, Don. He came up 68. They traded him to Philadelphia. They feel like they got a good deal, too, Frank. A third and fourth round draft choice. Came a year ago from the Rams. First and ten. Williams gets the toss. He gets dumped right at the 25-yard line. Three championship fights coming your way tomorrow night here on ABC. A loss of two, second down, 12. Strzok back looking. And he wanted Duriel Harris. Duriel Harris took a little too long making his move against Mike Haynes and Ray Hamilton was all over Strzok at the 12-yard line. And I'll tell you another guy that made a play. It was number 55, linebacker Ray Costick. And Davis was trying to make a move on him. He wanted to go to him second, and he couldn't get open. Good defensive play there. Shula's tendency in this situation to run a sweep to the strong side, to the tight end side, which would be to the upper part of the screen. On third and 23. And they may have used too much time. Now that's... That's not good. No, that's just one of those things that you see out there that, again, you can attribute, I think, to pressure, not being in the right rhythm, or whatever it might be. You're third an awful lot to go anyway. It shouldn't take you that much time to make it up. And there are the stats you mentioned on Grogan. Brandon, uh, they are good. They are good. He's reacted very, very well to pressure. His team was 10 nothing behind. Wasn't really his fault. And he's brought him back nicely. Now the pressure reverts to Strzok. Always Lay somebody got the heat Lay on. Play of game penalty. Moves the ball to the nine-yard line. Works third down and 23. I bet he sweeps now. <laughs> well, they're still in that wide set back there, which indicates they usually pass. Well, they're going to throw it. You're right, Dandy. From the end zone, Strzok. Not well, but they throw uh, it. In the general direction of Matt Moore, and you're going to hear some of the locals start to howl. George Roberts' job. Kick it deep. Stanley Morgan. He thinks it's going to come down somewhere around midfield. That's where he's lined up. It's a low kick. It's a low, but a fair catch is still called for by Stanley Morgan at the 49-yard line. And I think Morgan would have second thoughts about that. The ball was low, the kind you run back. But in any event, fine field position for New England. Frank, when we saw this game, 
When the Miami played Houston down here, we kept talking about the wind all night. We looked at two quarterbacks getting together, seeing what can we get going over here. That's where I think Greasy, by the way, can really be a big help. And what you said about him a while ago, Frank, I really believe that about him. He really does want to help the team any way he can. And obviously, one of the best ways he can through his experience of, of being out there playing and talking to Don Strong. Brogan leads the Patriots up. First and ten. The ball at the 48-yard line. Handoff is to Don Calhoun. He's piled up, but not until he gets into Dolphin territory near the 48. Call it a gain of three. It'll be second down seven. Jackson splits left. Morgan goes right. Great speed on the play. Jackson. Oh, yes. All right. Carl Jackson with the nifty move. Inside the 30. First down to England. <laughs> Nice move, Harold. Here comes Grogan. He's throwing with confidence, Don. He comes back, sets up quick, and he just zips it out to old Jackson. That was a quick set, only about a five-yard drop. And it was a little square out there by Harold. You see him make that move to the inside, and again, a little move back. He's doing some dancing over there. 33 years old, and he looks like a kid out there popping around. He needs one more catch. He's right now with 488 receptions is tied Don Hudson. He needs one more to move into the top ten all time in the NFL. Inside handoff is Horse Ivory. Ivory has another first down. Moved inside the 15-yard line to the 14. Norris Thomas made the stop. We're moving with 209 remaining here in the first half. This is Calhoun and Calhoun turns to the inside. Gets to the 10-yard line where it'll be second down and seven. Don Shula with a worried look on that face. And there is the two-minute warning. Ron Earhart, both of them know exactly how much this game means. In all probability, the loser will not go to the playoffs. We'll be back. Two minutes remaining in the first half. I mentioned that most of these players, the coaches, feel that if they lose tonight, they will not go to the playoffs. The reason being that they do not suspect that Houston, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, San Diego, or Denver, all in the AFC, well, they believe that the wild card will come out of that AFC Central with Houston, Pittsburgh, and Cleveland, or the AFC West, San Diego, and Denver. That's what their concern is here tonight. Each will have two games remaining after tonight. New England will play the Jets, then Minnesota. The Dolphins will play Detroit, then they'll play the Jets here in Miami in their finale. Second down and eight. Worth watching Harold Jackson on top of your screen against Daryl Small. Out of the backfield comes Horace Ivory. Oh, yeah. To get Francis. Watch out. And he was going to Harold Jackson, but Francis also is in the area. Good coverage deep. Tim Foley back there. If I were Grogan down, I'd be thinking about Big 81 Francis down there. Not much room. You need somebody strong to push people around. I think the key thing is the third down, Fran, you also don't want any kind of interception, so maybe he is a good one. Third and eight. Morgan. He had, had, had almost he picked off. And he had Francis open, too, coming across the middle. Well, it would have been a hard throw rolling to his left. I'm surprised he even tried to make that throw because he was extremely well covered over there, looked like to me. Well, it's a bootleg play. The backs go to the right. He goes to the left and should set up. Francis is coming right under the right. He was coming open. He that likes, man was covered. He likes the way Gerald Small runs his routes, I guarantee you, because he can't hit him again. If Small had better hands, he'd have two. Out comes John Smith, 19 of 28 on the year. Put up a star for the for the Dolphin defense. They did a good job to keep him out of the end zone. Twenty-eight yard attempt to tie it up. Right through and the middle. It is tied up. We're tied at ten with 144 remaining in the first half. And you can feel it generating here in Miami, and we'll return in a moment. Look at them. They're beautiful children. It's hard to believe that they all have juvenile arthritis. They're part of the 31 million people who are victims of arthritis in our country. Hi, I'm Bill Lankaitis of the New England Patriots. I've seen my mother suffer with arthritis through the pain and operations. That's why I do volunteer work for the Arthritis Foundation here in New England. They receive funding from the United Way, and volunteers like myself make it possible for this agency to fight this disease. These are my daughters, Chrissy and Laurie. They're healthy. They don't have arthritis, so I'm blessed. Each time I volunteer, I feel that I'm helping some child that isn't so lucky. You can help, too, by supporting your United Way and by being a volunteer. United Way works. Thanks to you, it works for all of us. The United Way, right?
Zinga Nasma was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League and Dr. Bill Lynn Kytus. He's the team dentist in the center for the New England Patriots, and that's for real. Tony Nathan. Nathan is deep. deep. John Smith will kick off. Tony Nathan, third round draft pick out of Alabama, where he did a little bit of everything for Bear Bryant. Tremendous athlete. Takes it at the five. And Nathan. Moves to the crease and gets out to the 28-yard line where Miami will take over. They have won the 38. They have three timeouts, and the momentum has disappeared and gone over to New England. Don Strzok remains the quarterback. The nicest word would be about Strzok. He's been tentative. Steve Howe, left side. Yard, a yard and a half does the rookie from Baylor collect. It'll be second down and eight, hit there by Julius Adams, who's playing over the right side in place of an uh, injured Richard Bishop. That way, then a timeout is called by Miami. Wide roller sport, second down and eight. Ball at the 30-yard line. Strzok hangs it up. And is picked oh. off, intended for Ronnie Lee, but is taken there by Ray Claiborne. Well, that's good running by after he got that thing, too. Playborn back to the 41-yard line of the Dolphins. There's 1.13 on the clock in New England as their timeouts. They have two. Yep, you can begin to hear him start yelling. This was Strzok's 11th attempt. He has two completions and now two interceptions. It was not a particularly well throw ball. They had good defense back there. Claiborne by the University of Texas. And love that ball after he catches it, so now it's turned around, Francis. But these were the same people a few weeks ago, and they were yelling for Strzok to play down here, Don. You mean they were going to go the other way? Now? I understand that. Yeah. 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 They might have changed their mind. One thirteen. I said two timeouts, New England has their full complement of three. The ball inside the 42-yard line. I don't think there's any question that New England will attempt to put points on the board from this field position. And a touchdown is reasonable, Frank. Plenty of time and good field position for him. Jackson goes left. He's been spectacular tonight. The speed burner. Morgan to the right. Right. Ooh. And almost picked up. Defensively, it was Ernest Brown, number 55, who almost collected it for Miami. Say two interceptions, two completions out of 11 is not going well. Second down, 10. Horace Ivory. And Ivory escapes Bo Camper for additional yardage up close to a first down. He might be just a little short. Bob Baumauer is in there pressuring Steve Grogan. Third, less than a yard. Calhoun, single setback. But Grogan, who likes to run the football, has no qualms about it whatsoever. And he doesn't do hook slides when he runs with it. He runs right into the defender. Two-minute offense set. The play has already been called in the huddle. The first down is at the 30-yard line. 45 seconds, the clock is moving. Grogan stops the clock. He did tossing it in the general direction of Stanley Morgan. Good play. It's, it's not too late to have a quick visit with his left side over there and says, look, I'm getting a little bit tired of sitting here looking at Baumhauer. If somebody wants to slow him down a little bit more, I sure would appreciate it. Isn't that what you talk to those offensive linemen? You ask them kindly, and uh, Baumhauer has been in there a lot tonight. And and sometimes as we watch John Smith warming up, he said, I'm going to get this left leg ready to go. He's playing over the center of Titus some, and sometimes he's over Hannah. Right now he's over Lentitis. Second and ten. Quick snap. Draw play. Calhoun piled up. Baumauer again in on the stop. He got help that time from Doug Betters, number 75. For the benefit of all you viewers out there, that was not a good call. Timeout called again by New England. They are now down to one. And that's top two, by the way. They are number one in the and two in the NFL. 24 yards of reception, 22.3. Tell me this, Danny. Why has Harold Jackson been kicked around the league? You know, he started at, uh, really started in L.A., went to Philadelphia, back to L.A., had good years everywhere, and then here he is with his fourth team. And that's, I think maybe he might have been the kind of athlete that had that unique talent where other teams wanted him. Oftentimes when you trade somebody, it's because the team you're with doesn't particularly want you, but I, I feel that in Harold's case uh, he was just a good commodity he was involved in a big trade with from philadelphia to get roman gabriel and they just said well here's a guy that can play for us so he he's never been a real big receiver he had good speed he's uh speed is not his number one asset right now i think now's experience and of course he came in a year ago after the tragic accident to daryl stingley who i'm sure is watching now working in the personnel area with the New England Patriots. I really hope they don't try to run the ball. They need to throw the ball, get it down there, and try to get a first down. Third down, nine. 35 seconds on the clock. One timeout remaining for New England. 
Going for Russ Francis, good defensive play by Tim Foley. He just would not let Russ Francis <laughs> inside, and Russ is really hot. He's going to have a word with an official. <laughs> and you got an and you got an interesting penalty. There's a holding penalty on here. Watch Francis go down the field. There's Tim Foley battling. That's illegal to hit down there. Well, there's a holding call up at the line of scrimmage, but we wanted you to see that. Tim Foley played that really well. He just stayed inside, and Francis not, can't run over him. Francis said, wait a minute. What is this, guys? <laughs> All right, here's an interesting decision. Ten-yard uh, holding penalty. Shula decides whether to make it a fourth down call to make him take a 47-yard field goal to push him back more to the 39. If I were broken, I'd say thank you. Well, here's the call. Holding. Offense. Number 73. Still third down. John Hanna, the all-pro left guard. Holding. It'll be third down. And, well, we'll call it 19. Bob Matheson comes in defensively, and I think you're exactly right. Don Shula got a great deal, has a great deal of respect for John Smith, the little kicker for the New England Patriots. Decided we'd better back him up. He might do something unreal. All right, big play here. Morgan is open. He got it. My God. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Stanley Morgan beat the zone. On the left side, oh, wow. defensively was the rookie Mike Kozlowski. He got behind Norris Thomas and just outraced the rookie from oh, Colorado, Kozlowski. Watch down the bottom of your screen. They zone him, but the deep safety man did not get back to the corner fast enough. Hey, That's that pretty good well speed. Thrown? That ball is well thrown. <laughs> and it's just like I said, I would rather see John Smith, the Byron Miami, trying to kick a 47-yard field goal. Here's Morgan again. This makes a big difference in this game. He's just cruising on down there at about 9-3. Well, Safety man never gets over there. That's Kozlowski, and he's getting burned. And I tell you, Kozlowski at a Colorado probably never saw a speed like that. Four receptions, 100 yards for Stanley Morgan. John Smith for the conversion. With 23 seconds remaining in the half in New England, has gone out on top. I've got the seven-point lead. The score touchdown, 23 seconds left to go ahead is some kind of a big bonus. Smith hammers it. Tony Nathan takes it at the 10-yard line. Watch out. Watch out as well. <laughs> Nathan gets to midfield with 15 seconds on the clock. Taken there by Don Hasselbeck. The other tight end that would probably be starting for any team that did not have a Russ Francis. Frank, I would think here he needs to look for a 20-yard pattern. Now, to get that, he's got to do a big break-in over the middle, about the 30-yard line, or go to the deep corners on a, uh, in front of the cornerbacks who are going to be very deep. But he's got to throw to one of the outside receivers either deep down the middle to the either deep corner. Daryl Harris goes right. Gary Davis is in there also. Cephalo is in there, as is Matt Moore. 15 seconds remaining in the half. And offsides to work with. Right. It's down. It is New England offsides, or appeared to be. Right. And this is Cephalo. Right. Down the middle. He's at the 26-yard line. Scoreboard clock indicates six seconds. Again, a flag is down. It did appear that Tony McGee was offsides for New England, but we'll wait till we get the official call because it could be a critical one. Here goes Cephalo. They're going to have a scramble to the right. You saw the flag go up. He's breaking down the middle. That's an open area in that prevent zone defense. He settled in there nicely, caught the ball, got it on down to the 26, 27 yard line. And out comes Uva von Schaumann. It's number 78, defense, decline, it was down. Tony McGee. What a pickup it'll be for the Dolphins if they can come back here and get this three points on the board. It will somewhat negate the New England touchdown. It will be a 44 yard attempt. Uwe von Schaumann became well-known after his last-second game-winning field goal to beat Ohio State in 1977. It became known as the kick across the state of Oklahoma. In his first game for the Dolphins, his first kick in the NFL was blocked by the Bills' Sherman White and returned for a touchdown by Charles Romes. He also missed an extra point in the game, and Miami fans screamed for the return of Gary Premian, who had been cut in favor of the rookie in training camp. as the time disappears from the scoreboard clock the Dolphins draw within four of the New England Patriots exciting first half we hope you're enjoying it
We have an interesting highlight coming up for you. A look at some of the top college prospects coming up. We have a special ABC News report. And, of course, we'll be going out to Las Vegas. Stick around. It's going to be an exciting second half when we return to the Orange Bowl. Saturday, a visit from a black sheep uncle puts the chill on Jeffrey's hot tub party on the Ropers. And guess who's back in her own brand new comedy special? Marie Osmond is Marie. Then Dick Martin turns the love boat into a sex lab, but finds that science doesn't always have the answers. Saturday. That's our story at halftime. At one point, Miami on top, 10 to nothing. Now it's New England, 17 to 13. Halftime feature is being brought to you by Merrill Lynch. It's a breed apart. And tonight, our halftime feature, a special one, because tomorrow night, Sugar Ray Leonard goes for the big one. The welterweight WBC title. It'll be brought to you by ABC. It'll be from Las Vegas and reporting, as he does so well, so often, Howard Cosell. Let's join Howard and Sugar Ray now. time is winding down at the Orange Bowl. New England on top 17 to 13 over Miami. The special Thursday edition of ABC's NFL football is being brought to you by Buick and your local Buick dealers who invite you to stop in and see all the new Buicks now during their holiday get together. And we'll be back with the kickoff after a word from our local stations. Bob Greasy warming up on the sidelines. Could he be coming in? We won't know, but we will know very shortly. Sunday, Mort plays Cupid to help the new girl in town. And Mindy's mad when the arrow misses the mark. Stop it. Then, at a special time, 8.30, 7.30 Central and Mountain, Bond is back. Dreamed about you, sitting here. The man with the golden gun, friendly discretion advised. John Smith will kick off for New England. Deep is Tony Nathan, a dangerous return man, the youngster from Alabama. Dribbles it along the ground. It's taken there. Well, it would have been by Gary Davis, but it goes out of bounds. And that will move New England back to their 30-yard line, where John Smith will put it in the air again. And on the sidelines, Don Strock, who opened the game at quarterback, has a warm-up jacket on. Bob Greasy has been warming up, and we anticipate that he will be the quarterback when Miami gets possession. That relief pitcher job he was talking about, they called for him coming in pitch the last four and a half, fella. That's what he did. A week ago against Baltimore. Not breezy on the year. Has been hot. He's been cold. We look at Tony Nathan. He'll move up close to the 10-yard line now as John Smith is backed up five yards after putting that ball out of bounds. The thing about Greasy, I think, Frank, is he's so consistent. And this will be Tony Nathan from his 12-yard line. He bobbles the football, collects it at the 20. And down he goes. And we talked to Bob Greasy last night. We talked about his problems, what has gone wrong this year. And here was Bob Greasy's reply as he moves in. Well, I don't know what the problem was. If, if I knew what the problem was, I certainly would have corrected it in my own play. I don't, uh, by any stretch of the imagination, think that it's the quarterback's fault entirely. Like I said, I think it, the quarterback should, should be the catalyst to get the thing going. And in the past, I've seen things that uh, we needed to change or adjust to. And I've done that to get it going. But uh, for some reason this year, I just uh, haven't been able to, to be as consistent and, and, and have the kind of year that, uh, that people are used to me having or I'm used to having myself. So uh, when Don Strock has been in there, he's done a good job. And uh, you know, I was all for the move. My attitude is let's get somebody else in there and see what they can do. And Strock apparently could not do it to the satisfaction of head coach Don Shula here in the first half. So it's Bob Greasy, Larry Zonka over the right side on that first play. Got five yards out close to the 27-yard line. It'll be second down and five. Much on the line. We told you that neither team feels they'll be in the playoffs unless they win tonight. They don't think six losses in the loss column will qualify for the playoffs. They feel that very strongly. 
easy play action fake. Intercept. Oh, oh my now God. Williams. Ball oh, pounded up in the air. Rick Sanford, the rookie number one draft pick from South Carolina, was in there on the blitz. Got his paw on the ball, but it went to Dell Williams, but there's a loss back to the 20-yard line. You know, Frank, they had a safety blitz on there. Many people say the screen's a great play against the blitz. It absolutely is not because the linebackers and other safety men are locked into those remaining backs, and that's what happened there. They were locked right in there because that's the only... They got to make that coverage. The passing specialty team comes out for Miami. Tony Nathan is in there, the rookie from Alabama. Gary Davis, number 27, Zonka comes out. The tight end Hardy comes out. Three wide receivers, Cephalo, Harris, and Nat Moore for Miami. On third and 12. Breezy. And Tony Nathan. All right. Oh, gets no the problem. first down out to the 40-yard line. And I really like this young athlete. He can do so many things. I like that throw of Bob Greasy. Watch him come right here, set up in that pocket, cool as he can be. He just rips it right on out there. Good play by Greasy. Good start for him as he gets going the second half. How many times have you seen a guy come off the bench and light up a team, Bendy? Well, it sure does help, you know, because it's oftentimes it does just kind of change the rhythm out there. You talk about rhythm a lot, but there's so, that's such a big key, particularly that passing game. Greasy, a little over 54% thus far this year in the times that he's played. 11 touchdowns, but he had 15 interceptions from the 38-yard line on first down. The handoff, Del Williams, he finds an opening, and he moves out over the 45-yard line for a gain of eight. Well, he's had been there four plays. He's thrown twice. He's run twice. And our statistician, Jerry Klein, came up with one. Coaches say you got to balance this thing. Have a running attack and a passing attack. In the first half, talk about balance. New England had 22 rushes and 22 passes. That includes two sacks. Are you ready for the rest of it? <laughs> yeah. Miami well. had 13 rushes and 13 passes. Now, Jerry Klein, where do you keep your head, man? Right there in the middle. He's got it. <laughs> Ball just over the 45-yard line. A little more than two yards to go for the first. Hand off, Dell Williams. And Williams, with a little extra effort, gets close to a first down. I believe he has it over the 48-yard line. He's something that I think is just really an exceptional back, Fran. We saw him. He was not down here when they played Houston. He was out with an injury. But he's the only guy that's ever been in the AFC Pro Bowl and the NFC Pro Bowl. Only guys ever running back has played for both the NFC and the AFC. He's also the only guy ever set rushing records for two different teams, the 49ers and here in Miami. How about that? He did it last year here with over 1,200 yards as we see the measurement coming up. And Don, Don, Don Shula gave up a lot for him. Bell Williams, a first-round draft pick. He gave up a fifth-round draft pick. And he gave up Freddie Solomon, and Williams has got the first down at the 48-yard line. Randy, you've got a plethora of information there tonight. A veritable plethora <laughs> of insignificant trivia. All right, Greasy's getting it going. He's moving it good. He's moving his offense around. Uh, this is a good run defense. I think by the stats of Don, uh, what about a half run, half pass? They're going to have to throw the ball on first down. Let's see if Bob thinks the same way. He knows how to run a football team. I'll assure you that. That more goes right. Duriel Harris goes left. The wide receivers for Miami. First down, Greasy to the air. Has the time, a lot of time. Goes to Zonka. <laughs> and Zonka is in a tugging contest at the 45-yard line with Steve Nelson. It's a standoff, but a pickup of seven. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's Steve Nelson is some kind of linebacker. As Brad Mitch earlier, leads the team by all oh, some 40 tackles. As the number one tackler there. <laughs> with the North Dakota guy, you can see, had plenty of time to throw, which is a real key. Tried to come over and knock the ball down. He said, whoa, 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 big zone. Zonka actually took that ball away from Steve Nelson as our superb camera work. He's got that kind of grin right there, says, I got it. Second and three. Harris flipped to the left. Zonka gets a block from Dell Williams, turns inside, gets the first down. Danny, don't you know, as good as Dell Williams is running the ball, don't you know those little cornerbacks, when they see Zonka coming around that pitch, just absolutely cringe and say, no, not to me again. Yeah, particularly when he gets out on just a little straight pitch and has oh. a chance to kind of turn up field. Again, the import of this meeting. Both teams tied for the lead in the AFC East. They've been tied five different occasions this season. And both of them feel that six games in the loss column will not qualify them for the playoffs, considering that Houston's 10-3, Pittsburgh is 10-3, Cleveland 8-5 in the Central Division of the AFC. And out in the AFC West, San Diego's 10-3, and, and Denver's 9-4. And 
The first down inside the 42-yard line of New England. New England on top, 17-13. Handoff, Zonka, and the big one. Rumbles inside the 39 to the 38. Gain of three, it'll be second and seven. Mel Lundstrom on the stop for New England. Miami next week will be in Detroit. Monty Clark has done wonders with Band-Aids up there. You saw the Thanksgiving Day victory of Detroit over Chicago. And then they return home for their finale. It'll be against the Jets, New England. They will be in New York for the Jets a week from Sunday. And then their finale will be at home against the Minnesota Vikings. Second and seven. Greasy. Going for Nat Moore. He has it. He'll be in. Kane slipped on a great move to the inside by Nat Moore. Nat Moore was wide open. Greasy gets a touchdown. All right, here comes Bob back in the pocket. Plenty of protection there, but he gets a little rush there. Gets the ball in good position. You see the defensive back slip down. Nat Moore, it's history. Mike Haynes is as good as they come. One-on-one -on -one defensively. Watch the move to the inside. Haynes goes for it. And down he goes. Ripped on his foot, trying to turn back around. Good move by Nat Morris. Nat Morris, first catch of the night, a big one, six points. An official has been shaken up on the play, and he is being treated out on the field. And I know that I know that play doesn't make uh, the Patriots fans happy, but that Mr. Greasy has come out here, his team behind 17-13, a lot of adversity, and he's put together as good a drive as we've seen all night. Put the ball in the end zone for a touchdown. Give the man a lot of credit. Matt Moore, his fifth touchdown catch of the season. He's really been very productive, Frank, in that touchdown category. Matt Moore, there's a lot of receivers that catch a lot of balls. And that's certainly one of them, as you see the official saying. I think it pinches right in here. I got a pinch in here. That's Dick Dolak uh, rubbing his knee, being attended to there. It's Mr. Uwe von Schaman. Coming on for the conversion attempt, 9-17. Remaining here in the third quarter, Miami striking back and taking the lead. Miami leading the Patriots now, 20 to 7 as the lead changes, just as the lead in the Eastern Division of the AFC has changed so many times this year. The man of the moment, number 12, Bob Greasy. Saturday, Eastern Powers collide as highly ranked Pittsburgh tackles Penn State. Then the Army-Navy game, a classic clash on ABC. It took a little more than five minutes. Greasy going four for four on his passing. And the Dolphins are out in front. Ron Schaumann will set it up. Alan Clark, rookie, 10th round draft pick from Northern Arizona. At the five-yard line. Shaman hits it. And there's a duel for it, and Rick Sanford comes up with it. Sanford nailed at the 25-yard line, hustling down there Don Besselu, a rookie out of Georgia Tech. Because of a late breaking news story at halftime, we could not bring you an NCAA piece that we had hoped to present to you. And of course, Naturally, the crisis in Iran taking precedence over anything that might be taking place here in Miami tonight, most certainly. But it had to do, we polled six of the teams in the NFL, each team from each division, and get an idea who they thought would be the number one draft picks. And if we have time and we can work it in without interrupting the game, we'll tell you the results of that poll. The team, of course, wanted to remain anonymous. First and 10, New England. They were hot when the first half ended. Greasy came out. We'll put Miami back in the lead. Let's see what happens. Horace Ivy gets the call on first and ten. Gets five, moves out over the 30. Make it six. It'll be second and four. Kim Bocamper defensively for Miami made the stop. You know, Don, it comes a battle of wills now. You've got a strong world quarterback in Brogan. He's got to put some life back into his team. He's got to put together a drive. Greasy's already brought his team out, took it from behind, and got them a drive. It's going to be an interesting quarterback battle as we go into the second half. Brogan his own plays. Second down, four.
Calhoun, left side, and he runs into Baumauer, down he goes. Better's in there assisting. Gain of a yard, a yard and a half, it'll be third and three. Ron Earhart, who had an incredible coaching record at North Dakota State before joining New England in 1973, and of course became the head coach in April of this past year. Don Shula, his son, by the way, David, was elected co-captain of the Dartmouth team. He's a spectacular receiver. And his son up there will be co-captain for Dartmouth, catching Jack Kicks. Sons Jeff Kicks passes next year in the centennial year of Dartmouth football. Third and four. Grogan. Flag is down. And Grogan has the first, but a flag is down. Doug Betters upending Grogan. Smarts. Yeah, that one really hurt him. Yep. Rogan had Morgan open, but Rogan is just as willing to run with the football if he sees he can get the first down as he is to throw the ball. But as he gets more maturity and older, he'll use <laughs> that great ability to get away from the rush and look for those receivers down the field. Number 77, offense, still third down. Gary Petz, you'll see it. Activated a couple of weeks ago. You'll right. see it right there, 77. He says, I can't get you down one way, I'll get you down another. That's, is that Den Herter, he's at there? He just pulled him right down. Here he goes again, another good shot. Got him by the shoulder pad and pulled him down. Kozlowski comes in in the secondary for Miami. They have five deep men. Third down, 14. Ball at the 22-yard line. Grogan's going down again. Oh, boy. Bo Camper again on the sack. Betters was also there, as was Carl Barisic. Barisic activated just yesterday, coming off the injured reserve. It'll be fourth down, and Miami has come out smoking here in the second half. People like to talk about which team is up and which team is down, which, as you can see tonight, it depends on who's making the plays. A kickoff return just before the first half, up to the 50-yard line, the completion for the field goal is the thing that really has got this momentum back Miami's way. Oh, oh, that's a safety. <laughs> Boy, the worm has turned again. Pete Brock, the center, he snapped it high over the hands of Eddie Hare. Well, it sure does make a difference in a game that we expected to be so close anyway. That put them out of your basic field goal range. Two points for the safety, and New England will kick away from the 20-yard line. They can cut it, or they can kick it off the tee. That's the sort. Saturday, a beautiful mermaid lures a diver into the depths on Fantasy Island. A safety. Ordinarily, Pete Brock is the center for New England. Dwight Wheeler was the center on that play over the outstretched arms of Eddie Hare. Safety, two points, Miami. And New England will kick from their 20-yard line. Behind their 20-yard line, they can either punt it or kick it from a hold, and they have elected to punt with Eddie Hare. Tony Nathan is deep for Miami, and obviously after the safety, there's a good possibility for good field position. Hare really pounds this one, however. Nathan all the way back to the 17-yard line. And Nathan to the 35. A good punt by Eddie Hare. Tackled down there by New England's Ray Costing. That really was a good punt. Frankly, you mentioned earlier the telecast, Eddie Hare ranks 28th in net yardage, but that time he really buckled it in there. You see, Nathan's not particularly pleased. Uh, and he's not pleased with the way he judged that punt. Greasy, who was so effective in the first series of this second half for Miami, moving them down the field. Touchdown pass, Matt Moore. 6.57 remaining in the third quarter. And Greasy, of course, remains the quarterback. Zonka, inside handoff. Making there, Ray Hamilton on the stops. Zonka with all that power gets a yard, a yard and a half out of it. It'll be second down and eight. And in comes Gary Davis. Out comes Zonka and Dell Williams. You know, 
we talked about the wind the day before. And I've played in this stadium, and the wind to me is one of the biggest factors in this stadium. And right now, Miami is going into the wind, so they're going to have it to their backs in the fourth quarter. Second and eight. Waddle, greasing. Oh. Bruce Hardy, first down at the 43 yard line. All right. Wide open, but right on the money. He got him right after his break. You see Hardy go down pretty deep, about 15 yards, a little bit deeper than you expect. Again, Bob's getting good protection there. Goes it right over the middle, and look at Hardy come right in. Wide open. Bam. A market just inside the 43-yard line. 5.45, and the clock is moving here in the third quarter. New England having defeated Miami earlier in the season. 28-13. First down, Dell Williams behind Zonka. Oh, Dell, go Dell. He took it in and he'll have any drops on football. Oh, they got it. And I believe they got it back. Yes, they did. That's when you know things are definitely going your way. Nat Moore, I believe, came up with it. And a dolphin is down. All right, here's just a quick pitch out to... Delvin Williams coming around the left side. You see Zonka in front. You see Larry Little. Zonka's trying to look for somebody. Finds nobody, but Larry Little did. Stretching on down. Big Sam Hunt makes a tackle with a little help from Mike Haynes. And three Dolphins have got a lot lock, lock on that ball. And somebody's down. That's Dell Williams. He is down. He's being attended to. And we'll be returning to the Orange Bowl in a moment. Sensational Sugar Ray Leonard, Olympic champ, undefeated as a pro, now goes for the title against undefeated Wilfred Benitez. Tomorrow night on ABC. Williams cutting by the block of Larry Little. And he will collide head on with Mike Haynes, number 40. There it is. The ball comes loose. Matt Moore was there. Dell Williams was on the ground for a few moments and then walked off the field. He is being administered treatment there on the sidelines. But he picked up the first down with a nifty run to the 29-yard line. Zonka comes back in, and Gary Davis stays in for Bill Williams. Matt Moore in motion. Inside handoff, Zonka gets a block from Larry Little, and he moves inside the 25 to the 23. Gain of about six. You know, we've been here once before tonight. The Dolphins are up 10 to nothing. Middle of the second quarter, about the same position on the field, and that's when things turned around. It's when Strzok did the interception. Now they're down there again. Touchdown puts them up by, what, 12? Field goal by eight. Makes one wonder, though, when you look at Shula's record, as we mentioned at the top of the show, winning record. You see him make a move like he did at halftime and see the result. You know, he may know something about this game. Pretty bold move. Second down. Long four. Too much time. Uh -huh. Twice this has been called tonight against Miami. And we hope you're enjoying tonight's game. It is a beauty. Three more games coming your way in our package this year. There they are. Oakland at New Orleans. That's next Monday. Oakland, of course, they still feel they are definitely alive. And, of course, as far as New Orleans is concerned, they are tied with the Rams in the Western Division of the NFC. Then what of Donnie Brook we ought to have when Pittsburgh and Houston get together. Right now, as they go into this week's play, they are tied at 10-3. Denver at San Diego. And Denver will have to complete their schedule, three remaining games on the road, and it will not be easy. They'll go with Buffalo. They go with Seattle. And finally, San Diego. And Don Coryell has put together quite a group of Chargers. And how about that quarterback, Dan Fouts? On second and 10. Gracie under pressure from... Tony McGee hustles it off in the direction of Bruce Hardy, incomplete. One of those kind of patterns that you really need some time to throw. He had a crossing pattern with Hardy coming from one side, trying to get Harris coming across the other. You just can't get those off very quickly, and he didn't have enough time to throw. All right, here's Don Strzok there, and he's got to be a very disappointed guy, but he's happy for Bob Greasy. Uh, everybody in this game wants their team to do well, whether you're out there or not, and Strzok just didn't have one of his better nights tonight, and Greasy's picking up the slack. There'll be another day for Don Strzok, for sure. Third and ten. Goff of 41 yards of the night. He needs 20 more to become the sixth player in history to make 8,000 yards. 
Third and ten, a man open. Complete to Nat Moore. He has the first down. He's at the 17-yard line. Oh, well, they're really clicking. Really clicking. They just got man-to-man -man coverage. <laughs> and then I said, hey, wait a minute, man. What's going on down here? Working against Prentice McCray. Moving back as a good receiver always will towards his quarterback. Minimize the time that ball will be in the air. They mark it closer to the 18-yard line, but the yardage was good enough for a first down. No matter how Greasy's played up to this point in this year, he is doing some kind of job tonight, and tonight is the time when they really, really need it. He's six of seven for 89 yards. The opening drive in the second half for a touchdown. He was four for four. The big ball to the 15-yard line. Gain of three. It'll be second and seven. Tanaka, who during the glory years, the early 70s, put together three consecutive thousand-yard seasons before he jumped over to the WFL. He now needs 17. To become the sixth back in the league's history to make 8,000 yards. And Greasy's in a good situation here. You know, second and about seven. He's in four-down territory. Uh, he can do about anything he wants. It's a position of quarterback he really likes. Defense is really on the defense. Matt Moore, top of your screen. Inside handoff, Gary Davis. And Gary Davis down close to the 10-yard line, short of the first down. It'll be third and a long two, upended by Mike Hawkins. The Dolphins under Shula in the Orange Bowl here have only lost 11 games. Some teams have a real great tendency of playing well at home, and his counterpart right there on the other side saying, hey, what the heck is going on right now? Hank Buller, the defensive coordinator of the New England Patriots. Third, and it's a long two. Gary Davis, huge game oh, hole. He has a first down. down. He would have had six, but for Tim Fox. Hank Buller is the guy that's responsible as we see this play again for that New England defense called a monster man or a rover defense. The rover didn't come over here this time. There you come. The safety. Came out of the Michigan State when he had his number one monster man was George Webster, number 90. Boy, I remember him when he played. But that's the guy that calls those defensive signals, and that's the way they get the word in instead of shuttling him. He's doing it on the sideline. Hank Bull, of course, was a co-coach. Chuck Fairbanks left the squad or was forced to leave the squad in the final game of the season here last year. Ron Earhart, of course, went on to succeed Fairbanks. Zarka, and he's close, but not close enough, down to the one-yard line. It'll be second and goal. Steve Nelson on the stop. And they've looked good in this third quarter, haven't they? Well, I'll tell you, in case our viewers haven't noticed, the Miami offensive line has just taken charge of this game. They are just pushing the defensive line of the Patriots back, and we have a Patriot down. After hitting Zonka, he leaves a lot of them lying down. The line Beautiful. is Kuchenberg, Newman, Mark Dennard. Dennard, he likes to be called. Larry Little on the right side, playing with a very sore ankle. Mike Curran is the right tackle. They're moving the football against the Patriots. 58 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Tim Fox moving off the field, limping slightly. We'll get a medical report as soon as possible. Meanwhile, back out of the field, Bob Greasy tries to quiet this partisan crowd. And you know what Greasy's meant to this uh, second half? The New England Patriots have only had four plays in the third quarter for minus two yards. Second and goal, the ball at the one-yard line. surge of this fine Dolphin line. <laughs> uh, he has to be so happy. He really does. Ninth touchdown of the year. Look at the rush. Big soft. He's gone over 700 yards thus far for the season. Yeah, these two old-timers, Larry Zonka, 32 years old, Bob Greasy, 34 years old, they've shown their maturity in class tonight, and they've taken charge of this game for the Dolphins when they need them the most. Well, there is no tomorrow. Ron Shaman for the conversion. That's good. The Dolphins moving out 
29 to 17. Last night when we talked to Bob Greasy, another question we asked him, Bob, what exactly is Zonka meant for this Dolphin team on his return? Well, number one, he's a class individual. He's a good guy to have around in the locker room. He helps uh, uh, just build the continuity of a ball club, uh, not even to mention what he can do on a football field. But, of course, his main suit is just handing the ball and letting him run over people. And, uh, he's done that for, like, uh, almost 700 yards this year. And he gives us a solid, strong inside running game and a good blocking uh, back uh, for the halfback. Talking about Larry Zonka. I talked to him, Fran. You mentioned we watch him score again that that he might give it up. I asked him that directly yesterday, last night that was, and uh, he kind of laughed and giggled. He said, I hurt so much all over my body. He said, I'm going to give it a long thought before I make the decision. So who knows? He really is pleased with his return down here, though, Frank, as you indicated. And, uh, he said it just seemed like it was one of those last second chances that so many people don't get. And that's really kind of what it's, that's literally what it is. Von Schaumann. Alan Clark, the rookie from Northern Arizona, we're going to have a fake reverse. And it didn't fool a whole lot of folks as Alan Clark rambles out of, to the 28-yard line. Don Westbrook came around as if he were going to take the reverse. He did not. <laughs> that is really an That's amazing grab. But let's look at the at, at the pitchers now. You know, they've got to say, okay, guys, we got 25 seconds in the third quarter and the whole fourth quarter. This is our season. We've got to make this drive go. We got to everybody work a little bit harder. And on the other hand, the Dolphins have got to stop them. And they have lightning on either flank. And Stanley Morgan, 86, and Harold Jackson, who we've seen already tonight score, number 29. Flag is down. This is Horace Ivory in the arms of Kim Bocamper. Well, if it's a holding penalty, it is. They're going to really again be back in that position. Yep. Oh, man. They cannot get on track. The second half is the long to the Dolphins. The word on Tim Fox. A slightly sprained ankle, if there is such a thing. The word is also that he will return. All right, Francis, your team seems to be slumping a little bit here. Let's see if you were out there. Now, you've got to do something when you say that. Holding, holding. number 77, offense, still first down. That's two on him. Gary Pets. You know, they continue to have problems with their offensive tackles, and, and Grogan did what he had to do then. He completed the pass. He's really putting a lot of pressure on the quarterback now to make him a second and 20, and you're behind like you're behind. New uh, England penalized six times tonight, a 15-yarder, four 10-yarders, and a five-yarder. First and 20. Fired. Stanley Morgan. Incomplete. speeds from Tennessee. By the way, tonight and every night, as long as the situation in Iran remains critical, ABC News will bring you a special report immediately following your late local news. And if you've been following those late reports, you know it's complete, concise coverage by our people in Iran, also our technicians here in the States. Shelby Jordan, who we missed last week with an injured knee, is coming at right tackle. He wears 74. He replaces Gary Petz. Second down, 20. Francis is open over the middle, but this is Stanley Morgan. Morgan has the first down, as right on target for Steve Grogan. And there it is, the end of the third quarter. The score, Miami 29, New England 17. We'll return for the fourth quarter in just... It's good to have Andy Sedaris with us tonight, directing. Meaning what? You can tell Andy Sedaris film, I don't care where you go. You know, the man's in show business. This is life. He's doing a superb job tonight. Here comes the blitz. 
On first and ten, Grogan gets to time. He's got it. And he's got the big man, Russ Francis. He has a first down at the 30-yard line. He has been open much of the night. You can see those big rib protectors he had. He's been struggling a little bit with some nagging injuries all year, too. And so is Don Hasselbach, another good fine tight end coming in there. But Russ is the guy that really is kind of a game breaker for him. Exceptional athlete. And the difference these last two plays is Grogan has had plenty of time to throw the football. And he's found his receiver. He's wearing uh, his big pads around his ribs and his back. He had a crack transverse process in his back. Missed a couple of games earlier in the year. Still bothers him. Russ Francis. On first and ten, Grogan to the air once again. He's got him. Francis is open. He caught that ball. ball. No, he did not oh, catch it, but it was sure close. Oh, he came so close. Oh, man. Russ, what an effort. Son, what an effort. He's playing hurt. We just told you the problem he had early in the year. He made a tremendous diving effort. And when you fall like that, it hurts. You know, Frank, I think about a story. You know, he, he had a really very severe accident, a motorcycle accident, this last offseason, January the 7th, after the season was over. And he really was knocked unconscious, had several bruises, several cuts. But you look at a guy and you see him go, this kind of effort, friend. Now, the ball is overthrown, but just for the effort. And he fell right on the ball. That's and it. I'm assuming that that's what knocked the breath out of him. I hope that's all that's wrong. I lost a pair of ribs myself in Pittsburgh one time by falling on the football. And that appears to have been what happened to Russ Francis. We'll be back in a moment with a report. I'll tell you the teams that we pulled, we told them we would not. But how about these guys? Brad, Buddy from USC, there they are. Bruce Clark, Penn State. Curtis Dickey, Texas A&M. Junior Miller, Nebraska. Jim Richard, North Carolina State. Billy Sims, of course, from Oklahoma. James Stuckey. Anthony Munez, USC. And these are all that were on at least four of the six teams that we polled. Isn't there a name there that you would expect to be there that's not there? And that's Charles White. And he's not really in that top one that's in there. That's kind of surprising. He made, half, he made half the teams. Half of them. Big Lamb Jones out of Texas. Ronald James, Tennessee. Tim Foley. Another Tim Foley here out of Notre Dame. And Stan Brock. Question mark. Obviously, it's Charles White. He's a 185-pounder, but it's <laughs> a lot of 185 pounds. He carries the ball some 30 times a game. Led the nation, of course, in Russia. I found it interesting because you're talking about the sophistication of the pro drafting, and we talk so much about how you build teams through the draft and whether you do or whether you don't. Uh, but they, they really didn't agree that much, so maybe there are some secrets that different teams have. Now, looking down in the field, look at the entire New England Patriots that moved out on the field. They're looking down to where Russ Francis, a moment ago, reached for, almost made one of the most incredible catches you would ever see, fell on the football. Frank, you know, something else I noticed with that turn, also his head. He didn't have the, his hands were all trying to grab the ball, so his head hit the, hit the, hit the field pretty hard, too. There is the respect and admiration that his entire team feels for Russ Francis. Yeah, they moved out on the field. They're staring down to where he is being treated at the moment, being placed on a stretcher. We'll get a report to you as quickly as possible. Frank, as I sit up here and reflect on the effort that Russ Francis gave, I hear so many people saying that the kids aren't like they used to be, and the modern-day players don't work as hard as the players did when we come up. That's an example there of what they do. He sacrificed everything he had to go make the catch. He didn't, and he hurt himself in doing it. But a tremendous effort by Russ Francis, and we've gotten tremendous efforts from all of these people here tonight in a fabulous football game. Again, we'll give you a full report as quickly as possible. Scoreboard clock, I do not believe, is accurate. I think it's 14.09. It indicates 4.09. 14.09 remaining in the fourth quarter. Play resume. Second down and 10. The ball inside the 30-yard line of the Miami Dolphins. The score of the Dolphins, 29. The Patriots, 17. Grogan in trouble. Drops the football. Oh. It'll be Miami's ball. Doug Betters, I believe. Well, there's a mad hassle for it. It all started with a breakdown and the right offensive tackle. We pointed out a couple of times that Pets has been called for holding. Shelby Jordan, who's been who's playing injured, came in. Then Herter's been having a heck of a night over there. It was really forced for that outside. I'm not sure if it didn't hurt at that time, but it did come from that sex to that side. I think it's Ernest Roan who came up with it as Grogan looks downfield, can't find anyone, pulls it down. He loves to run with the football. There was a shot. It did come in over Shelby Jordan's strip by better side of it, but actually that was Bull Capper. 
that time. You know, almost unnoticed down here, Doug Betters has moved ahead of A.J. Dewey in the starting lineup for the Miami Dolphins. A.J. Dewey's still a fine player, but Doug Betters has beaten him out. He's playing better. First and 10, Miami. The cool one, Bob Greasy at the helm. The ball at the 29-yard line. That more in motion. Zonka gets the call. <laughs> Fun to watch. Flag is down. Zonka gets out to the 32-yard line. Frank, when you reflect, look at the last three plays. The Patriots, we all know, and most of the fans watching, I'm sure, know how important Russ Francis is to that New England team. He's out one play. You see a fumble by the next play. That's broken. The ball turns over. They give the ball to uh, Zonka, and now you have an unnecessary roughness penalty. So that's three plays in a row, and it's just kind of could be the three key plays of the whole season because if they don't win this ball game, they're out of it. There's Claiborne on the stop, and there is a late shot coming in there. Steve Nelson. First hit foul. number 57 defense. First down. And it goes against yeah, Nelson. Yeah. Moves the ball out to the 48-yard line of Miami. This game is played on the thin edge tonight of emotion. So much at stake. Report is and that's Francis. He's not temporarily unconscious. We feel that there might be some damage to the neck. He will be X-ray. Here comes Gary Davis, left side. Good open field tackle there. Tim Fox. Gain of maybe a yard. It'll be second down and nine. They've been in control ever since Greasy has come off the bench. Second and nine. Movement, but no flags. Gary Davis. And Davis across midfield. Boy, is that Nelson fired up out there. I'll tell you, that was... <laughs> They're all getting fired up. Nelson was just knocked down with a hard block by Larry Little and came back and made the tackle. Unbelievable. And back in the secondary, Zonka got in the fight. I'm telling you, things are getting... They're getting active. There's Tim Fox back there. A little quick swing out to the outside. You see Little coming out to set up above it. Swing to Davis. There goes Nelson now. Nelson gets back up, and he's back in the play. Harry Davis moves close to the 48-yard line. It'll be third down, long six for Miami. And he's heating up. The three wide receivers for the Dolphins. Hardy out of the lineup. Cephalo comes in. He's number 81. Harris, of course, 82. Nat Moore, 89. And they're coming after him, and look at that. Nathan, the rookie from Alabama. Close to the 35. They're marking it for 36, but it's a Miami first down. Now, Tony McGee was all over Bob Greasy. He just coolly dropped it off to his setback coming out of the backfield. Greasy now working on the clock. 11.48 remaining in the game. 29-17. The Dolphins over the Patriots in this oh so important game. Zonka. <laughs> 23-yard line, another first down. Tipped up by Ray Hamilton. <laughs> it would have been a long way for Zonka to go, but he certainly intended to make it. There's a shot of Ed Newman, who runs over <laughs> Tim Fox, who comes up from the secondary. They're going to try to turn that thing in. The big song just came behind him. And look at that stat, Frank. He's a lot of class. Sixth player in the league, in the history of the league, to rush for over 8,000 yards. And Greasy has got him motoring on down, killing the clock, and getting first downs. Super job of the offensive line. Many of them playing hurt in there tonight. Zonk again. Just carry big Sam Hunt. All the way down to the 15-yard line, a gain of about eight, eight and a half yards. Not anything fancy. Hand the ball left and right to Zonka. And he's just chewing up ground behind an offensive line that's completely dominating the New England defensive line. Easy now, easy now. New England moves to a four-man front. Understandably so. They're getting bombed by that offensive line in their 3-4. Hand off. Gary Davis. Gary Davis down to the 12-yard line. Has the first down. Heading for 10 minutes. Scoreboard clock. A little messed up. But we're inside 10 minutes. 
Not that the Dolphins have to settle for a field goal in this situation, but a field goal would put them 15 points up, which would obviously force the Pats to go for two touchdowns and a field goal, and it would be very difficult to do. This drive started at the 29-yard line. Zonka. He had a collision. First with Rick Sanford, and then was stacked up at the line of scrimmage. And I think Reese spoke for this entire Dolphin ball club. Oh, got us a little new formation here. Come on. Left, left. Didn't work. Oh, we'll file that one. It'll be third down and eight. We're talking with Zonka last night. We talked about the hurts that he's had here and there. We asked him what it really has been like this season, his comeback season. Here was his reply. Frank, I've got hurts from the bottom of my feet to the top of my head. Yeah. It's been a kind of a bruising affair. The running style's always kind of incorporated that. But I'm afraid uh, I'm even slower than what I was 10 years ago. And uh, people get to me quite a bit more, but I'm, I'm very lucky in the sense I have a very good offensive line. And they keep people off of me. Larry Zonka, and it always seems to hurt it late in the season. He's rattled off 76 yards tonight. Three He's rattling away. That's smart. That right. loves it. That was. Ray Kostick was in there on the blitz for New England. We're going to see Von Schaumann with 8.09 remaining. Field goal, a successful one by Von Schaumann. Would mean that New England would have to do more than two touchdowns. 27 yard attempt. Splits the uprights. nothing lead they had a critical turnover on a drive right before the half and they them to come back so it's in a way not too surprising that actually I guess as far as the favorites because of this home field advantage Miami was a favorite I don't think by this margin at all New England has made too many mistakes tonight if you're wondering if he should go down to a tie after the regular season, the first criteria to break that tie is head-to-head -head competition. If Miami wins tonight, they will have split. The second criteria is record within the division. And that, of course, will be predicated on the remaining two games by either team. This is Zonka. Down he goes, and the flag goes down with him. Both teams had lost two division games when they came into action tonight. Sides indicated against New England. Whereas well, we showed you this several times because it is so pertinent to the situation here in Miami tonight. Both teams, and they said it repeatedly, that they felt six losses in the loss column would not qualify them for the playoffs because of the action of three teams in the Central Division, Pittsburgh, Houston, Cleveland, and a pair of teams out in the Western Division, San Diego and Denver. Second down, six. Ball at the 41-yard line of the Dolphins. Zonka, single setback, gets the call, left side. Follows the block Whoa. to Newman, gets to the outside, up into there. He was hit by Mike Haynes. That was a good time. Sam Hunt. <laughs> is going to threaten the blitz. They'll probably come with it, trying to strip the ball. Third down and four for Miami. Oh, no. Tony McGee jumped off sides for New England. And Miami gets the first down as Larry Zonka carries it out to midfield. Those are things, Frank, that you just, you know, you just don't do those kind of mistakes. I don't care. It's you know, a big, crucial third down play. They made it anyway, but the one thing you don't do is jump offside. You know, Don, they've done it the entire night. The Dolphins have had much more poise. They've had holding penalties against the Pats, offsides, a lot of mental errors. 78, defense, decline, first down. Well, you're right, but the credit really did kind of start in the first quarter. So uh, New England hold the ball for almost, I think, 11 minutes of the first quarter, and, and yet they didn't really put they didn't put any points on the board. Not to hurt themselves. Eight penalties against New England thus far tonight. 80 yards penalized. They've turned the football over four times, and it's reflected on the scoreboard. 32 to 17, Miami. That's what you call midfield. Gary Davis. Oh, and he is. 
solidly there by the big backer, Sam Hunt. Little trivia, you know. I like trivia. Big gain of four. It'll be second down and six. It's Gary Davis out of Cal Poly at St. Louis Obispo. Has three of the ten longest runs in Dolphin history. The second most productive day as a runner when he gained 176 yards. He's one of these guys that can do a lot of things, catch the ball, run to good speed. Second and six, Nat Moore in motions. Zonka gets the call. Very little tries to hook block. Unsuccessfully, Hunt is there again as Zonka gets to the line of scrimmage. That's about it. It'll be third down six. New England trying to win in the Orange Bowl as we look at John Hanna, the all-pro guard for the Patriots. New England trying to win here for the first time since 1966. And it doesn't look all that hopeful. Well, John hadn't been in the field much the second half. The Patriots have had the ball for 14 plays the second half. Two of those were punts, and one of them was a safety. Very difficult to win the football game when your offense isn't on the field. Yeah, it didn't look like he was looking for a happy Christmas, did it? No. Bob Greasy, the cerebral one. He'll let that 30-second clock tick down, as he has now, to two seconds, and he gets the snap. Gary Davis, piled up, across the 45 of New England to the 44, but it'll be fourth down. He was stopped there by Mark Newman. Mark and the speed stood from Tennessee. Having a great year in the receiving department. Leading the entire NFL, yards can catch. And he has not been able to use that speed thus far here this evening. They're going to let it run. They're going to take the five yard yeah. penalty. They just wanted to use all the seconds they could on that clock. They used 50. Possible 60 seconds on those last two plays. The point you made about Bob Greasy, I think, is a very good one, Frank. Still fourth down. He let it run down to the very last possible second to run that third down play. So they used up 60 seconds, and that's they need all the play help they can get. Like his coach Don Shula, Bob Greasy is a perfectionist. He's shown it here in the second half. 316 now indicated on the clock. Set to punt. He's letting it count down once again. Roberts angling for the corner. Fair catch indicated by Stanley Morgan in the ball. Bounces into the end zone. Touchback. Just one more reminder. Tonight and every night, as long as the situation in Iran remains critical, ABC News is going to bring you a special report. And that will follow immediately your late five remaining, Dom. Well, you try to hit a guy wide open. Of course, Ivory. Yeah. Somebody is fast. And he gets up by Bob Matheson, but he has the first down out at the 33. Yeah, that's what you do first. And then you run up there real quick, like. And have you say, called a play in the huddle? Yeah, you call a play in the huddle. And you say, all right, I want another one of you guys to get wide open, just like Horace did. And then you start pulling for Detroit next week. That's right. On first down. But I'm going to throw this one over the middle. And Don Westbrook bobbles it. Then you, you get you get Westbrook. Well, you back here and you say, look, Don, the next time I throw you one, keep your eyes on it until you caught the ball. Then turn around and throw. You can see right there on the sideline, that's a guy that's taking it very serious, 10 pocket. Good player, had a slight injury in his ankle earlier in this ball game, but these guys know that, hey, they, their season is in jeopardy. That's putting it mildly. Again, New England plays the Jets in New York. A week from Sunday, they close at home against the Minnesota. A week from Sunday, Miami travels to Detroit. That's not going to be all that easy against Monty Clark's troops. And then they return and they play the Jets in their finale here. Second and ten. Rogan. High in the air. It's picked off. Cozy. Neil Colsey. That ought to about do it. It was already done before that. But it's still a nice run back. Colsey all the way inside the five-yard line. Well, it started out to be something really pretty close, pretty good. And it kind of got away from him. That last pass. Again, the papers, as we mentioned,
Chris Gurley have had a lot of injuries in the offensive line. Shelby Jordan is playing injured tonight. He came in after Fetch went out. That last interception, at least, is partially responsible over that right side because Shelby got turned upside down. Brogan did have to press it a little bit. They had good defensive coverage. Overthrew his receiver, and Colsey picked it up. You know, you, you got to give Brogan credit. I mean, here's time ticking down. He's back there throwing, trying to do something to win. Cannot fault him for the interception. He's got to take chances. He's got to gamble to give his team a chance to win. He's played very well tonight. The and reason the, for defeat is not his. And by the like token, Fran, Miami knew exactly what Grogan had to do. They were in their five-man deep prevent coverage. Grogan had to go up on top. He had to get the points on the scoreboard quickly. That's really true. It's been a good football game. Yeah, and uh, it just got in a the hole. They made too many mistakes. It sounds very simple, but that's really what happened. These guys just made too many mistakes. Isn't that usually the case? Yeah, it really is. Often you, a few times, are you beaten. You beat yourself many times. Zonka to the two-yard line, second and goal. I bet they're going to try to get Zonk three touchdowns tonight. What do you bet? And just keep running him. <laughs> Larry getting up just a little more slowly than he was in the first quarter, but he's up. Limping a little bit. You heard him talking about all those aches and pains. I love these. I'm even slower than I used to be. <laughs> Got a birthday. He'll be 33 years old coming up Christmas Day. That's the two minute warning. We have time out on the field. We'll be returning to the Orange Bowl in a moment. Orange Bowl. It was sold out. The last remaining tickets bought by our ABC affiliate station, Channel 10, here in Miami to provide lifting of the blackout. And our press box. Report is that Fran Francis, Russ Francis, is up and talking. He's walking around in the locker room. We hope that is true. We wish him the very best. As Anka gets the call on second and goal, piled up, and he gets in. Well, I thought they stopped him, but he I just did. Kept, he just kept turning. Yes, sir. There he goes off. What's that? Three for the night. That's three for the night. Puts him at ten. Standing ovation for Larry Zonka. See the guys on the sideline. They uh, they got him a player there. And Bob Greasy, I think, put it pretty well. He adds an awful lot just being part of this team, whether it's in the locker room or on the field. The night you see him on the field score three touchdowns. Ron Shaman getting a workout tonight. And handling the chores rather well. 39 to 17. Would you have believed that? Not to believe that, and as they always say, isn't it fun to win? But it sure hurts when you lose one like this. 156 on the clock. The New England player is down on the field. The Dolphins 39, the Patriots 17. Well, we got an artist and a motorcycle rider. Yeah, playing that tight end position. I understand he paints, brother. He rides that motorcycle. Ron Shaman pops it. Alan Clark from the five yard line. Clark runs into traffic out around the 23-yard line, struggles forward to the 24. Mike Kozlowski made the stop there. So it looks like it's not a good year for New England once again. New quarterback, whether or not Steve Grogan does remain. This is Don Westbrook. There he is, number 53. In the seventh. Second down three, two-minute offense. Disappointing night for New England. They got a touchdown for the first time in three years, but again, they have not won since 1966 in the Orange Bowl. Rankin Smith, Eddie LeBaron, the owner and general manager there, are solidly behind Lehman Bennett. They're a family. They've done a wonderful job. Bennett had him into the playoffs last year for the first time. He is a quality coach and will be the Atlanta coach for many years. So much for that report. Yes, sir. And you first did, down to Horace Ivory. to the 40-yard line. And while we're talking about coaches in jeopardy, one was over-jeopardized, the great Palomar, Bud Wilkinson. Yeah. I hope he stays in the game. He did a good job bringing St. Louis along. Well, he really did. You never know, or at least I don't know all the circumstances. You see Grogan do something that quarterbacks don't like to do, but it's that time of the year when he gets the first down. Yep. He got it in there. At least they're not throwing in the towel. Totally, I don't know why. Stops 
the clock with 44 seconds. Who's going to win the timeout? Yeah, we're going with NFC. I'm really looking forward to coming to New Orleans. And look out, center. I'm on my way. Well, those stats don't mean a thing to, to Steve Grogan, I know. But he has been impressive tonight. He has really tried to rally his team the entire night and did rally his team. Again, I say again, he did not lose this game for his team tonight. It was the mental mistakes that his team was making the entire evening. Oh, uh, that does say an awful lot. Sanford, the number one draft pick out of South Carolina. Who Real said it was going to be easy? Yeah, he didn't tell me about things days like this. Grogan on first down, 49-yard line of Miami. You're wondering why he wants to All right, continue to keep the Patriots involved. If you ever get down to one of those final tiebreakers, somewhere way down at the bottom, do not win consistently in this league, regardless of the talent. From the 27-yard line, Grogan back on first down. There's another one. And Norris Thomas was dumping the ball when he went out of bounds. Incomplete. Requesting you saying turn out the lights. You don't have to, though. 34-4 versus AFC East. That's really wild, isn't it? Second and 10. Grogan. Incomplete. Intended for Calhoun. Clock stop. 23 seconds. You mean, you know, when you said that, Frank, it was as if you didn't think very many folks do. I think Susan painted that. Turn out the lights, the party's over. They say that all. You make Willie Nelson sound like Perry Como. must be in. What do you mean? <laughs> Weeping Willie Nelson. <laughs> oh, me. Well, that's the way it goes. I saw him last night on the show. Yeah. Willie has really got some miles on him. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. They were all intentional. <laughs> Third down and ten. Incomplete. Carlos Pennywell downfield for New England, just activated yesterday. Make the world go. Again, we want to remind you, coming up tomorrow night, three championship fights. Of course, the headline, if you follow this young man from Montreal, nice young man. And gifted, of course, he's fighting Wilfred Benitez, who is also undefeated. And, well, there's a lot of people say that maybe Sugar Ray has gone, come too fast, too far. We'll find out tomorrow, won't we? And the coach will be right there tell us about it. From Las Vegas. On fourth down, Grogan. Morris Ivory. He's got the first down, and he's running out of seconds. They stop it, does New England, with five seconds. And that's it for the timeouts. But it's hard. Miami's won the last 12 games, the last 12 times they've played. That doesn't really... I give you another odds. obscure fact that I'd scrounged up somewhere. I love those. Let me have Chula one. Chula has started quarterbacks 15 different times other than this man, Bob Greasy, here in the Orange Bowl, and he's never lost a game, starting either Strzok, Morrell, or whomever. That would be it. That yeah. would be it. Strzok and Morrell. Strzok and Morrell. And the old Zonkshire had a good night tonight. Look at those stats. He didn't make it over 100, but 22-88, he's keeping it even. Go from three. 22-88 equals three. Grogan, this will be in the end zone. He wants points. Again, if you're wondering why, well, if you get down to one of those obscure tiebreakers, the point differences will make a difference. Wow. He got Carlos it. Carlos Pennywell. He got it. Grogan, with no time on the clock, hits Pennywell for a touchdown. And I'll tell you, that was a heck of a throw again. And he came back and rifled that one. Pennywell was there. He was pretty well covered, but he hit him right in the middle. Give the man credit. He hung in there, and he kept pitching, and he finally got him another touchdown. They'll have to clear the field for the conversion attempt. I think, Frank, we should actually give a little credit to our colleague tonight who has been playing with with a great deal of pain. He's got some cold. Uh, it's different between pain and injury, right, Fran? And I'm convinced it's now injury. It's gone beyond pain. He is not feeling well before this contest, and he's now, uh, it's over, Fran. It's going to be all right. He's going to stay bad, I go. It has been cold here tonight, and I'll go along with you, Don. Yeah, I'm Fran has been playing hurt tonight. Yeah, he played with injury. Show me some style, fella. He's been sick all day. Rogan now 350 yards. The conversion is good. I want to remind you again, Russ Francis, our last report was he's up walking and talking in the locker room. It's over in the Orange Bowl, and it could well be over for New England. 
Raiders against the New Orleans Saints from the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. Travel arrangements made through and a promotion will be paid by United Airlines. More people fly United to Hawaii than any other airline. This has been a presentation of the leader ABC Sports, bringing you exclusive coverage when the world comes to America this February for the 1980 Winter Olympics.